uh, Republic of Cote d'Ivoire. And um, good evening, standing on all the other protocols. Um, it's an honor to be here today. It's a relief. It's um, a humbling experience. And I'd like to first of all thank everyone for coming. For those who do not know what the Africa Investment Forum is all about, I would take a second to say to you that this is a platform initiated by President Akimumi Adesina. And in initiating it, he enlisted the uh, support and collaboration of seven founding partners whom we all met today. And what we have in that collaborative approach is the Africa Investment Forum, a transaction-making platform, multi-stakeholder, multidisciplinary, and geared towards raising capital, project preparation, and accelerating deals to financial close. I repeat, accelerating deals to financial close. <laughs> that is what we do, and we take particular pride in doing that. The project preparation aspect re remains a very strong pillar of the Africa Investment Forum because contrary to perception across the world, there is no shortage of capital. What we have are deals that are prepared to attract that capital. I'd like to take a moment to thank our host country. Um, I've do done a lot of work across the continent, but um, in our surgeon in Côte d'Ivoire, I was particularly impressed by the synergy of um, both the initiative and the implementation from President Al Hassan Ouattar through to the Vice President uh, Kone, through to the Prime Minister Patrick Ashi, and of course, all the ministers, particular mention to our strong woman, uh, Minister Kabanieli. There has been a consistency in both the initiation and the delivery. And what we find is a country ready to explore the vast potentials and implement them. So I thank you very much, Côte d'Ivoire. And um, I would like also to thank the president of the African Development Bank. It's been uh, a very challenging road for the Africa Investment Forum, but I thank him for standing firm. I thank him for the uncountable times that text messages and WhatsApp messages come to him in the middle of the night seeking direction, and he gives it unflinchingly. I thank him for the time that we've counted on him to give us the support we need, despite a lot of um, things to the contrary. He has stood firm in the vision, and what we see today is just the tip of the iceberg. The continent has not been explored. The continent has just as much resources of what lies above and what lies beneath. And the job of the African Investment Forum is to actualize that potential. And we've started, and it's fun. And I'm not going to spoil the surprise. I'd like Mr. President, uh, President Akimumi Adeshino, to tell you all about what the results of this exciting three days have been. It was kind of hard to get people in to the halls for the plenaries. This is the first time since the COVID there has been a physical meeting. And you could see that people just wanted to talk to each other. They just wanted to do business face to face. They didn't want to Zoom. They wanted to give people a hug, talk about their businesses. And um, what we see is that we have just begun. And it's up to us to ensure that the continent is what it ought to be. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. And once again, thank you very much and congratulations to you. Ladies and gentlemen, the time that you have been waiting for has come. The big moment, le grand moment, est arrivé from Africa's optimist in chief, President Akinwumi Adesina, president of the African Development Bank Group, that I'm welcoming, that we are all welcoming to give us the big numbers.
Thank you very much. Uh, merci beaucoup, Marie Angel. Your Excellency Patikachi, Prime Minister of Côte d'Ivoire and my dear brother, Madame Kaba Niali, the Minister of Planification. Minister of National Planning and Development of Côte d'Ivoire. Everyone knows uh, Mrs. Uh, Kabanyali. She's the Minister of Planning and Development. I think we should add something to that. She's also a very good dancer. Yesterday at the gala dinner, as you know, I'm a president who dances. So we danced, and then we could not stop. But uh, since uh, she's Minister of Planning, I thought that uh, she would uh, bring to an end our uh, ceremony. But she joined me on the platform, and uh, she uh, led me on to, to the dance floor to continue dancing. And I told her that we should continue dancing. But she said, we should dance as we walk towards the door. Thank you very much, Madam. So I hear president, presidents of the African Investment Forum partner institutions. I know many of them um, have to also go to COP27 and they traveled, but I recognize two of them that are here uh, uh, with us. Uh, Admasu Tadese, the president um, and the chief executive officer of the Trade Development Bank but also uh, Alan Ebubise, the CEO of Africa 50. Your Excellencies, Ambassadors, Heads of Diplomatic Organizations, Executive Directors of the African Development Bank Group, the Senior Vice President and Vice Presidents and Management and Staff of the African Development Bank Group, and same also for all the partner institutions, and you, the dear participants and investors from around the world, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, and of course, my sweetheart Grace, please give it up to my wife because... <laughs> Thank you very much. Well, well, we're back for the closing ceremony of the Africa Investment Forum. How fast 72 hours can go by so good evening to everybody. Welcome to this closing ceremony of the Africa Investment Forum 2022. Now, three days ago, we all got out from around the world with a focus on Africa and with a focus on investments in Africa. Africa, because the continent is the investment frontier destination of the world. Africa because the continent brims with enormous potentials, potentials in infrastructure, rare minerals, renewable energy, oil and gas, agriculture, manufacturing, digital and creative industries, and of course, sports. If you were really in the session with Masai Ujiri today, honestly, you will put a lot of your money into sports. Africa, because of its huge and dynamic and entrepreneurial youth, our best assets. People say the youth of Africa are Africa's future. No, they are not Africa's future. They are Africa's present. We heard a lot about the potential of Africa. We celebrate, of course, Africa's potential. But there is no market for potential. Nobody eats potential. We gather to unlock and unleash the potential of Africa via investments. As I walked around the forum, I saw and I witnessed dynamism. I felt the excitement, the drive, and the focus on investing more in Africa. I felt a buzz in the corridors, the hallways, the boardrooms, that indeed Africa is bankable. As I visited some of the boardrooms, 
I could not but be impressed with the quality and the diversity of the projects, the clarity and engaging nature of the presentations by the project sponsors, the incisiveness of the questions raised by the investors. I was impressed to see heads of states and governments acting as CEOs of their countries, chairing sessions, engaging investors, promoting investments in their countries, and providing assurances that investments will be safe, secure, with very strong political and policy commitments. That's what makes the Africa Investment Forum different. It's not so much about your excellencies, it's about excellent projects. That is the focus, deals, deals, and deals. So in three days, you have all been working on deals. Yes, we know the times are difficult financially with geopolitical developments all around our world. But we are not deterred by this because we know that Africa is bankable. And you, the investors, know, at least many of you know, even by now, that Africa is bankable. So, I am delighted to announce that in the past 72 hours, you, who participated in the Africa Investment Forum, collectively, we successfully mobilized $31 billion in investment interest for projects. Wow. Now that is incredible. I can't hear you from here, though. <laughs> well done, everybody. It's all adding up, and adding up so well for Africa. The year 2022 is a year it has two and two. And it is what I call delivering double, double for Africa Investment Forum. For the first time in the history of Africa Investment Forum since we started, we held it twice in one year, virtually in March of 2022. And of course, in the last three days, November 2nd to November 4th, of 2022. In March of 2022, the Africa Investment Forum mobilized $32.8 billion in investment interest for Africa. In the past three days, it mobilized an additional $31 billion, making a total of $63.8 billion of investment interest mobilized for Africa by the Africa Investment Forum this year alone. Thank you. Now, in Nigeria, you know, we, we, we like to dance in Nigeria, you know. I, we have a song that says, everything is double-double. And uh, just so that you know how it is, we always say, Everything now double, double, now double, double, everything now, which means everything is double and double. That's how that song actually goes. And I remember when I was Minister of Agriculture and I was going to the National Assembly, Minister Azira, maybe you might dance like that on your way one day, it might help you as you go to National Assembly. And I was dancing, going over there, and I always said, Agriculture, na double, double, na double, double. <laughs> well, the Africa Investment Forum delivered double, double for 2022. Congratulations. <laughs> the success of the Africa Investment Forum was because of you. More than 1,800 people project sponsors, investors, and delegates from around the world, you made the difference for Africa. I wish now to thank, I have so many thanks to give. I give thanks to God first and foremost for helping us to make this a successful event. I wish to thank President Alassane Ouattara 
for his incredible personal support and that of the government of Cote d'Ivoire. Thank you to the Vice President Kone of Côte d'Ivoire, the Prime Minister Archie of Côte d'Ivoire, Minister Cabanelli, Madame Laforce Tranquille, for her strong support and partnership. I would like to thank President Nana Akufo Addo, the CEO of Ghana Incorporated, <laughs> President Emerson Manangagwa, the CEO of Zimbabwe Incorporated. President Sally Walks Zude, the CEO of Ethiopia Incorporated, for being here with us. I'd also like to thank the Vice President Jewel Howard Taylor of Liberia, Vice President Pango of Tanzania, the Prime Minister Korea Il Silva of Cabo Verde, who represented their presidents as CEOs of their respective countries incorporated. And of course, we are honored to have representations from President Paul Kagame of Rwanda, represented by Minister of Finance Uziel Indaji Gimana. <laughs> My own president, President Mohamed Buhari of Nigeria, represented by my dear sister, the Minister of Finance, Zainab Ahmed, who can now dance double-double on the way to the National Assembly. <laughs> president Sasu Ungesu, of Congo, represented by the Minister of State, the State Minister, Jean-Jacques Bouya. <laughs> President Talon of Benin, represented by Finance Minister Romold Wadagne. <laughs> President Masisi of Botswana, represented by Minister Gafela. <laughs> and of course, President Uyusi of Mozambique, represented by Minister Matthew Magala, I almost say vice president because he was my vice president at the bank. I wish to thank the president of the ECOWAS Commission, Umar Toure, the Secretary General of the Africa Continental Free Trade Area, Secretary Wamkele Mene. You see, their presence was very important because it helped us to have regional importance to all the investments we are making. I wish to thank the powerful delegations from governments from around the world, especially the United States of America that has such a huge delegation, led by Richard Joe Lewis, <laughs> President and Chair of the Export-Import Bank of the United States of America, as well as the Vice President of the Korean Exim Bank, Sang Ho Lee, <laughs> the Brazilian Development Bank, and the Japanese Association of Corporate Executives represented by Ken Shibusawa. <laughs> I'd like to thank our incredible partners, the AI Partner Institutions, Africa Export Import Bank, the Africa Finance Corporation, Africa 50, Development Bank of Southern Africa, the European Investment Bank, the Islamic Development Bank Group, and the Trade and Development Bank for their hard work and efforts and collaboration and cooperation in mobilizing support around the projects. <laughs> I said at the press event that we all held together collectively that there is not a single project today in Africa that is bigger than all of us. And I'm confident that there is nothing that we really cannot do in Africa. We will develop the projects. We will de-risk the projects. We will syndicate around the projects. We will co-finance around the projects. No project that is strategic in Africa that falls here that will not grow. <laughs> and I also wanted to make a commitment so that it's not just about what we announced. When we had our meeting together with the partners I said to them that we've got to commit to some big things for next year. So in the interest of transparency, I'm going to tell you. Three things. First and foremost, that we will work on special agro-industrial processing zones all across Africa. <laughs> and the low bar is for Africa to feed itself. The high bar is for Africa to feed the world. 
The second thing we agreed that we are going to work on, it's on the issue of value chains for lithium ion batteries. You see, we have cobalt, we've got nickel, we've got lithium, and all these things are exactly what you need to make electric cars. So as I said in my opening remarks to this forum, the future of electric cars in the world depends on Africa. But we're not going to make the same mistakes again of exporting raw materials, no. We want to develop value chains to manufacture lithium ion batteries for electric cars, and why not electric cars right here in Africa? <laughs> and thirdly, we are all heading to Sharm el Sheikh. I will be leaving tomorrow for Sharm el Sheikh, and many of you are heading over there. We are all talking about renewable energy. God loves Africa. And God has given us a tremendous amount of sunshine. We have 11 terawatts of solar power, which is the highest in the world. And we have at the African Development Bank, we are making a $20 billion program to harness the power of that sunlight, to light up the entire Sahelian region of Africa, all across 11 countries. That will provide electricity for 250 million people. And it will be the largest solar zone in the world. But as we do that, we have to make sure that we can actually produce the polysilicons right here. And of course, the, um, the, the solar panels right here in Africa. So we, the partners on this platform, took a bold decision that we will support the manufacturing of solar panels in Africa. So we give ourselves a task, which we have to report back to you the progress we are making. Alan, are you here? Tadase, are you here? You have to give me, I have to hear you. Where are you? you got, can you get up and so they can see you that I'm not alone on this? All right. <laughs> we will come back to you. That's what we want our continent to be, at the top of the value chain, never again at the bottom of the value chain. The success we saw today could not have been possible without some critical people who worked so hard night and day for months to make this happen. They are a formidable team. Many thanks to the senior director of the Africa Investment Forum, Chinelo Anohu. Can you please stand? For excellent work, perseverance, doggedness, and incredible effort in the face of several challenges. Well done. <laughs> Onike Nicole Hura, where are you in this hall? Oh, yeah. Please give it up to her because she's the lead for the investor engagement work stream, and she worked so hard, she had to be hospitalized twice as she was planning this event. Thank you, Onike. Thank you to the team of the Africa Investment Forum, Martin Oji, the lead for Transaction Workstream, and your team. Thank you. Thank you to all the bank staff and all our partner institutions who worked so hard and you delivered communications and media. And I want to particularly recognize my director uh, of media, Solomon Mugera, because, as you know, Solomon, where are you? All right. <laughs> you know, there are people that they just like to work in the background. He's director of communications of the bank. And I called him before this event started. I said, I wanted you on stage to be able to play a function. And he said, Mr. President, no, I'll be backstage making sure everything works. Talk about wonderful attitude. And that's the attitude we have all across the bank. I'm proud of all of my staff. The communications and media team, the protocols team, the security and health services, oh, the procurement teams, the legal services, because there are contracts to be signed, the language services. We can hear each other, you know, with the interpreters. Haven't they done a wonderful job? Uh -huh. 
and of course the drivers driving all the ministers and heads of state around and the security forces. Without them, what will we do? Thank you very, very much. Now, thank you to my senior leadership team, especially my senior vice president, Swazi Shabalala, vice presidents, De director generals, directors, and managers. If you are in the hall, please stand and be recognized. And of course, you know, what can you do uh, without your board of directors? The board of directors makes all decisions. So are my board members here? All right, please stand. <laughs> Thank you very much to our board of directors for their support, incredible support for us on this. Thank you. And most importantly, my appreciation goes to a particular group. <laughs> and that is you. Can you please stand and clap for yourself? <laughs> You're the most important part of this, you know. Uh, without you, what we will be doing? <laughs> thank you, and thank you, and thank you very, very much. Thank you. Uh, you made the business-to-business -business discussions, uh, the panel discussions, the boardroom deals happen. I wish to also recognize somebody who also worked incredibly hard. Javier Fournier. Are you here with Edlard? Javier, may you see you in a pala. Are you there, Javier? He's not here? Oh, right, he's here. Javier Fournier was the one who and his team put together this event. What an incredible work they did with all the logistics that you see. Everything you see here was put together by them and also the partner team, so thank you. I'd like to thank Publicis, the company that actually helped us to set all the setup, all the things you see. It was done by uh, Javier and their team with Publicis. So thank you to Publicis for a job well done. <laughs> thank you to the hotel staff, Hotel, hotel Ivoire. Merci beaucoup uh, pour tout. Thank you for all the facilities and all the work to make this a successful event. Thank you to all the staff. To you, the members of the press, for being here. If you've been following the story, the press has been covering this a lot. And thank you for writing the story of the success and beaming them from across the world of the success stories of investments from Africa, right here from the Africa Investment Forum. <laughs> now, excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, let us, let our collective success now motivate us to do more for Africa. Together, let us change opportunities for millions of our people in Africa. It's not just about the money, it's about the people. And we must accelerate hope and bring it to pass faster for all of our people in Africa. Together, let us turn their hope into reality, a reality of wealth across Africa. For Africa must shine. I wish you all safe travels. As you travel back to your respective homes, may God bless you all with double, double. May God bless Africa with double, double. See you next year for the Africa Investment Forum 2023. Thank you very much, and everything now double, double. Thank you so much, Mr. President. I'd like to come back on a number, $31 billion. We venons de constater. Uh, we just observed that nothing is impossible with the Africa Investment Forum. It is extraordinary, barely 72 hours. And what has been possible is to witness the three days of intensive work in this very beautiful setting, and which was uh, commissioned about 60 years ago, ago by President Ufwe Bwanyi, a builder. What are we doing today is building the Africa of tomorrow. He advocated the legendary hospitality of Côte d'Ivoire throughout his life. 
And yet again, the country of hospitality, Cote d'Ivoire, has outdone itself, has gone beyond the expectations, and the delegates were mesmerized uh, by the warm reception that was extended to them, and that, that is reflected in all the hugs exchanged between the various participants, which is reflective of the warmth of Cote d'Ivoire. And this really was conveyed from the get-go by the authorities of Cote I would allow the president of the African Development Bank Group to uh, finish greeting all those who have made it here before announcing the next steps. And I have talked about a warmth which, uh, you know, started at the beginning of this uh, forum. Uh, and the ball was set rolling by the Prime Minister of the Republic of Cote d'Ivoire, Mr. Patrick Achi, who I'd like you to welcome with thunderous applause. Madame, uh, Monsieur le Président du groupe. The President of the Africa Development Bank Group, the Minister of Planning and Development, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, all protocol duly observed. At the end of three days of intensive work of during the Africa Investment Forum, allow me on behalf of His Excellency Mr. Lassan Ouattara, President of the Republic of Côte d'Ivoire, and Mr. Timoko Miele Kone, Vice President of the Republic of Côte d'Ivoire, of the government, on, on my personal behalf, to extend my hearty thanks to all who have mobilized exceptionally. The Africa Investment Forum 2022 was a great success thanks to your attendance, the quality of your discussions, and your commitment to strike deals on sustainable investments. Cote d'Ivoire is honored by the attendance of three African presidents, three vice presidents, three prime ministers, and more than 20 ministers who graced this event. I would also like to commend the contribution of decision makers, investors, project sponsors, financial partners, and business leaders, national and global leaders. Overall, AIF 2022 recorded more than 1,800 participants from different uh, walks of life. And I'd like to take this opportunity to commend and congratulate the Minister of Planning and Development, as well as Dr. Akiwumi Adeshina, the President of the Africa Development Bank Group, as well as uh, the participants for the perfect uh, organization of this event, and specifically, obviously, with the support of the uh, AIF organizing team led by a lady of substance whom I would like uh, to congratulate here, the senior director and uh, Constance Onike for recovering. I would also like to add to this uh, gratitude the uh, work done uh, between our organizing team and the team on the bank side. Mr. President, over the last three days, there have been seven plenary sessions, uh, 12 parallel sessions, 40 dealing rooms or boardrooms, and there were several uh, back-to-backs. And going by the interest you have demonstrated during the boardrooms or the uh, marketplace, I would like to say that there have been so many projects, transformative projects that are supported by all and sundry. At this juncture, allow me, alongside uh, President Adeshina, to commend the fact that in 2022, more than 63 billion 
dollars worth of transactions have been raised for the Africa continent, and this is unprecedented and has never been pulled off by any organization of this stature in uh, Cote d'Ivoire since independence. I would also like to hail the fact that several projects that have been selected for funding are led by dynamic and strong women. Ladies and gentlemen, the outcomes of these marketplaces are will usher in brighter days for a more resilient economy and a more prosperous Africa. I'd like to thank you all for your unflinching commitment uh, to rise to the challenge of filling the gap of investment financing in Africa. AIF once again has demonstrated that it is a significant market that seeks to harness the potential of Africa. Once again, thank you. Thank you to the African Development Bank Group and to the board and to its partners for this beautiful sterling initiative. Ladies and gentlemen, I would like to conclude by wishing you a safe journey back to your respective countries and it is on this note of hope and ambition for Africa that I declare closed on behalf of His Excellency Mr. Alassane Ouattara, President of the Republic of Côte d'Ivoire, the uh, proceedings of the third edition of the Africa Investment Forum and see you at the next session for a uh, winning Africa. I'd like to thank you for your kind and keen attention. Mais je ne voudrais pas que... It would be remiss of me to leave the stage. Uh, yes, uh, dear friend, uh, before I leave the floor, I will feel like uh, this is something missing if I do not give an important testimony, at least as far as I'm concerned. Yes. Uh, the one who did not know what IF means, someone said it earlier, the first one was me. When it started, let's say a couple of months ago, maybe a year ago. Because to tell the whole story, IF was not meant to be held these few days. It was meant to be done last year with uh, our president from South Africa coming here. But unfortunately, we had at the same time Omicron. This day was very difficult, hard one. I will call uh, Adesina at 4 a.m. in the morning. Thanks to God, Grace was by his side to say, what do we do? Do we keep it? Don't we keep it? And we went like that, we went on until finally it was decided that it would be canceled. Because so many people were worried that with new variant of COVID, that no one knew at that time, no one knew what was going to come. And after all the work that the technician, the team, every single person who was there was done, even in our side, it was very sad, but we had to cancel it not knowing that maybe just a year later we'll be here watching what we're watching today. So when President Adesina was talking about what they did this past couple of weeks, what happened these few days, I just want to recall that it's just not that. It's also what was done a year back. Every single person you cite here worked as hard as they did and then nothing happened. But yet, they were not discouraged. They kept, you know, face. And it was really an honor, a pleasure, that Côte d'Ivoire was picked up because it was not, not obvious. It was initially done to be held every single year in South Africa. No one knew that one day, because of COVID, because of this, we might think about another country. So Côte d'Ivoire opened the door we're really happy that everything went as well as we thought it could be. This is why, uh, 
And uh, this is why I, re uh, we really want to thank you also uh, in my term as I have the floor today, uh, President Adesina. We know you, Adesina, as the really, should I say it, yes, um, the dreamer. Because when you talk, uh, people uh, realize that uh, you're not really there. You're somewhere else, you know. I mean, your mouth talk, but we could feel that your spirit is somewhere else, you know. And that only the people who have deep ideal value in them could do that. So I would say thank you, Adesina, the dreamer. Thank you, Adesina, the believer. Thank you, Adesina, the mentor. Thank you, Adesina, the man of conviction. Thank you, Adesina, the man of pragmatism. Thank you, Adesina, the man of action. And today, I can add that. Thank you, Adesina, the dancer. Thank you all for the love you showed us for this country. And naturally, uh, I would like not to follow, as I say, to thanks also Shinolo Anehu, who knows why I'm saying that. She helped us so much to be able to be ready for the boardroom. Thank you, Shinolo. Thank you, Onike, for all you did for us, for the understanding, and for all that. As we about to leave, I would like uh, to tell you how happy, as I say, we feel on behalf of my head of state. Uh, I wish you all a nice trip back home, but welcome back to Abidjan. You will leave this country. We might not see you tomorrow, after tomorrow, but uh, you will leave somewhere here a part of your heart, and you will go with a part of ours. Thank you so much. J'invite à présent les ministres. I would now like to invite the ministers in the room, together with the president of the African Development Bank, uh, to join the Prime Minister of Côte d'Ivoire, Mr. Patrick Achi, for a group picture.